Hello, I'm Matt Absalom from the Italian Studies Program. And as we begin our conversation today with Stefano De Pieri, uh, the noted uh, trailblazing celebrity chef from Mildura, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands that we're on today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and the Lapchi Lapchi and Bakinji uh, people. E vorrei anche rendere omaggio ai loro anziani e alle loro anziane di ieri, di oggi e di domani. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here today with uh, Stefano, who is one of our uh, noted arts um, alumni. And you'll know him as uh, a key figure on the culinary scene in Australia. But maybe what you don't know is uh, that he has a long history uh, in civic life and in politics. And maybe Stefano, Maybe you, you'd like to just tell us a little bit about your background in politics, where it all began. And the reason we're talking about this is because of your recent election to the Mildura Rural City Council. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Matt. Um, yes, I want to, uh, first of all, stress that I was a very poor student. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best academic ever. <laughs> <laughs> I always had another project, always something else on the go. Be that as it may, I was always preoccupied with politics from the moment that I came to Australia. But I came at a time of Whitlam. Mm. So Australia was in ferment. Mm. Uh, things were happening every day, good and bad. Obviously, many good things, fantastic reforms were being introduced and being opposed at the same time. Mm. And I went through the 1975 um Coup d'etat, because that's what I believe it was. And there's been a lot of reference to that recently. Um, and uh, at any rate, uh, I got myself involved in the politics of the Italian community, mm. which in turn was reflecting the politics of, the, of, of, of Italy itself. And those years, um, there were terrible years because of terrorism in Italy. Um, and the Piombo, the, the, the years of lead. For those friends who are listening, that refers to bullets mm. uh, that came out of little pistols which were operated by um, people on the fringes of politics to destabilise the state, whilst at the same time the Italians were swinging very quickly to the left. Uh, in fact, by '76, I think, Enrico Berlinguer leader of the Communist Party held something like 36% of the vote. Mm -hmm. If you added to that the votes of the socialists and other, uh, and other political formations of the left, probably Italy was on the verge of a 50-50 situation, which encouraged both Berlinguer and Moro to look for a historical compromise. And then we know that Moro was killed by the Red Brigades and that put an end to it. And Berlinguer died. At any rate, in Australia, the Italian community was equally divided, if you like, along those political lines. And, and it happened to uh, happen in a, the context was where some conservative parts of the Italian community were saying, we are guests here, we've done very well, this country, we owe this country our loyalty. And of course, nobody ever questioned that. But what we were saying was, yes, uh, this country has served, has served us well, but there are still uh, lots of disparities. Uh, there are no interpreters. There are a lot of accidents on, on the job. There is no proper pension fund. We were arguing for a pension fund well before Keating came on board with the idea of superannuation. Um, and we were advocating for a multicultural society. Uh, and that put us into a clash with some sections of the Italian community who thought we were an ungrateful bunch of stupid lefties that had no gratitude at all. But I think we were vindicated because then following the, the, the demise of the Labour government, Malcolm Fraser became <laughs> an advocate for multiculturalism. So there was nothing inherently wrong with that claim, just that uh, perhaps it was all, this, um, all these intersections of Italian politics in Italy and Italian politics here, uh, and anyway, it was all very colourful. And looking back, um, it was fun 
and perhaps really a waste of time. I should have been, I should have been studying uh, a lot <laughs> and, and be a better student. In hindsight, that's I, I would have won a society and the university if I had done my job. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. The interesting thing is the combination of the the possibility to you know, to the freedom that university life gives gives you to pursue um, civic interests, if you like. And I guess for me, the interesting thing is for you, it's sort of full circle now, in a way. It's like a coming back. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Well, after after uni uh, and after the, all these uh, uh, meddling in Italian uh, Italian community politics, I eventually um, uh, I found my way to a kitchen. Mm. I had this ambition to, to learn how to cook. But in that context, at that time, in 83, I was involved in a deadly, almost lethal car accident. Mm. And during the uh, period of convalescence, I reviewed my situation and decided instead to complete the degree and then go to the public service. I wasn't chickening out of 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 uh, of cooking, if you excuse the pun. Um, <laughs> I just thought that my interest in politics was always, in a sense, stronger than my interest in cooking. And do you do you think that has sort of always been in the back of your mind, just waiting there to come to the fore again? But the political interest. Yeah. When my political interest in Melbourne for complex reasons came to an end, I um. I moved to Mildura via marriage and saw an opportunity. But I also saw the opportunity to return to cooking, but highlight through my work, if you like, uh, the issues that are coming to the fore now. Mm -hmm. And it is rivers are being mm -hmm. uh, over-extracted, that climate change is decimating uh, particularly fauna. We've got a huge loss of bird life. And, and so you can talk politics through food. In fact, I can see a better way of engaging with people uh, other than, you know, better than actually talking about where the food comes from, what the pressures are on food production, the economics of it, how it's changing from small farmers to large multinational corporations and foreign interests. Uh, I'm not jingoistic, so I've got a problem with that, but I do become a little bit worried when, you know, the pension fund of, of the Canadian teachers owns masses of water to put to the production of almonds. The amount of water extracted from the river is frightening. So you've got this contradiction. Almonds are good for your body, essentially for your health. They're very nutritious. The cost of producing those almonds in environmental terms is, uh, is, is, is something to be looked at and understood and, and possibly reviewed. Um, and then you have to ask yourself, well, the profits, where do they go? Yes, surely they create a few jobs around here. It's a very mechanized industry, but the profits, the pure profit, end up somewhere else. So our water makes profit for other people. Hmm. And there's a lot of fine tuning. I'm not against it. I'm a realist, but there's a lot of fine tuning. And once you delve deep into these issues, you understand that food is not just something you put mechanically in your mind, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, without thinking where it comes from and what it means and what kind. And then, by extension, naturally, what sort of society do you want? Do you think your new role in the council will give you a platform to? sort of progress some of these discussions beyond just talk? Well, yes, yes, we have to engage with state and federal government as a team and both uh, councillors and staff are acutely aware of these, of these problems and we certainly will continue to lobby. My, uh, my personal belief is that conversation with either Canberra or Spring Street can get you so far, it would be ideal if we were to find a way of connecting to consumers directly. Mm. Uh, because if the consumers become, in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever, if they become aware of the complexities, they might in turn be able to become um, our supporters and allies. You know. Talking about 
um, food in the area and clearly Mildura and, and the Sunrays of that area is one of the key food bowls for Australia. What, what, a, what would your favourite ingredient to work with in the area be? <laughs> it's like asking which one of your children do you <laughs> sure <laughs> Sophie's choice I guess that for me the most uh, symbolic uh, uh, product out of here uh, in, in small quantities you know is is the maricod which is now farm um, and it's a uh, your niche uh, product but if I were to pick one thing that uh, symbolizes this area, its history, its connection to the, to the environment and the past, you know, the, um, it will be the maricod. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, beautiful fish, very romantic. But I'm almost slowly at my older age turning to vegetarian because mm -hmm. when I see a fish wriggling and I feel my blood curdles, I, and then I see these trucks full of... Um, pigs or uh, cows going past in 40 degrees heat. Mm. I, I, I just turned the other way. I'm, I'm becoming a real softy. Uh, and I think it's a, I've had a pet, a pet recently. Yes. Three years. And it, 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 she uh, has softened me to the point that I cannot even tolerate, you know, feeding a kangaroo meat. Are you a vegetarian? I am vegetarian. I've been... Yeah. I haven't eaten uh, eaten meat of any kind for over fifteen years. Wow! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, a funny story about being vegetarian. I was in Italy. Um, this is a number of years ago, and I, I was with a group that I was leading, and we were on a bus going around, and we we stopped at the the um, the Alto Grill for lunch. And I was with the driver, and uh, so he said, come with me and we'll get lunch. And I said, okay, off we go. And I say to him at a certain point, oh, I'm, I'm vegetarian, all happening in Italian, of course. He goes, oh, you know, no problem, no problem. <laughs> anyway, what he brings me is a plate of um, tortellini, but with tomato. So for him, that was a vegetarian dish. They were meat-filled tortellini. tortellini yeah. <laughs> I that the sauce would, uh, would make it vegetarian. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you what, um, what you prepare typically in this sort of summer festive season. What are some, what are some things that, you, that say to you summer, end of the year? Oh, well, it, we, we, um, we follow the seasons here and what, as much as we can. Mm. And at the moment, the weather is warming up. We still are on the last of the citrus, so we have a little citrus mm. ricotta, homemade ricotta. Homemade ricotta. Fish. Homemade ricotta is really, really nice, made from normal standard milk. Although now have a, uh, the, we are resuming business with a goat farm, so I should be able to get goat milk mm. to make our ricotta. And then we also caramelize the whey, you know, the byproduct of the ricotta. And that goes into a citrus salad. Um, uh, or alternatively, soon that they resume producing cheese at the goat farm. We'll have goat feta. Mm. And that's really good with grilled rock lemon. A rock uh, melon. <laughs> rock. Sorry. I invented a new fruit. Um, we, we are doing maricod uh, mm -hmm. at this time of the year because, because it's fairly light. And we just finished the broad beans. So maricod baked with broad beans, um, tossing a little tomato. Very simple dishes. In terms of business, how are things now? Since I've been in the business for now nearly 30 years, uh, a few days in lockdown actually served me well. I had the opportunity to go and do some exercise, do some reflection, read, mm. uh, uh, rest, and um, the world came to a standstill, as you know. It did. Uh, and it, uh, in, in some ways it was a disaster for people who lost jobs, who got sick, and families in troubles. We hear during lockdown things like domestic violence are on the increase, 
because people are under pressure or there's toxic masculinity or whatever. Mm. Uh, for me, I, I, I'm a pre, one of the privileged few who had an opportunity to, to take a break, and now we're, we're opening again. Although I'm not sure how long I will keep going for. I'm soon to go past the 6-5 um, um, <laughs> order, you know. I may start closing the borders myself. I wanted to ask you what you've been reading since you mentioned it. Well, I, I am a, a not a very disciplined uh, person, so my reading is also undisciplined. At the moment, I am looking at Mali Country by mm -hmm. four academics from La Trobe University and also friends, Richard Broom, Charles Fay, Andrew Gaino, and Katie Holmes. This is a very good introduction to the history of the Mali. I always go to, especially when in lockdown, or to theme parks. I just love the way he writes. And this literary tour of Italy is just sheer delight. Especially the chapter on Leopardi. But even things I did not, like his take on Mussolini and so on. It really, uh, really, really always very pleasant. And uh, someone gave me Jan, Jan Morris on Trieste mm. uh, recently. And I pulled out one of my go-to books um, in conjunction with this to have another look at Claudio Magri's Microcosmos, mm -hmm. which also de deals with Trieste and, and, and Istria and that part of the kind of, the part of Italy you describe as, could describe as Middle Europe, really, in a Absolutely. way. And he's such a delightful writer. Mm. I think he's, uh, I'm having, what do you call it, a man crush? Man and, crush. <laughs> and I mean, he must be older now, but um, I always write it on him and he's, and he's you know, he's, 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 uh, he's very dapper. There was a period you were doing a lot of reading of Dante, and I think yes. you were doing some memorising. Yes, right? memorising, yes, and I continue to do that, albeit intermittently, but I intend to go back with a vengeance, yes. For a long time I've been meaning to pick this up. It's Clive James's translation of Dante. The yeah. Divine Comedy. Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah, I have. But he adds another line. It, uh, the Tercina becomes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's quite astonishing, though the the effort to rhyme <laughs> to do the rhyme. Um, I mean, again, it was erudite and 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 crazy to undertake a project like that. Uh, uh, you wonder why, but <laughs> nonetheless, we have it. I can't wait to get back up to Mildura. Yes. Uh, get some warm weather. I grew up on the Murray, so I've got a, yeah, as you know, uh, and I've got a real... Emotional connection. Absolutely. The best place to swim in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, for the, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you very much. I look forward to another one. Absolutely. Ciao. Ciao.